we, we invite folks from the outside, mm. folks who have a story, because everybody has a story to tell. And today is no different. You guys need to sit back, better yet, lean forward, because Paris Mbuthia is in the house. She has written a book called The Audacious Dreamer, a story of faith, hope, and love. Wow. Paris Mbuthia, welcome to Hot 96. I thank you, Jeff. It's my pleasure. I've been dying to come here. You don't even understand. Come on. <laughs> yes. I am happy to be here and to hang with you guys. Oh. Yes. Welcome so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Say the last. Welcome. Just the way you said yeah. <laughs> 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 we are two of us here. <laughs> Thank you, Jelas, for having me in the show. Oh, I am yes, humble. I'm no, 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 really no, no, humble. The audacious dreamer. Audacity. The word audacious, audacious comes from audacity. audacity. Correct. Oh. Remember Obama? Audacity oh. of hope. The audacity of hope. Oh, now the audacious dreamer. From so, a smoker in Kogelo to the president of, of the United States. Now at 56, already retired and just chilling. What a life. What a wow. story. Paris Mudia, mm -hmm. what is your story? Uh, Paris is a small girl from a small village somewhere in Anyuki, Mishawareli. Mishawareli? Yes. That's where you were born and raised? That is where I was born and raised. Okay. And so I was born to a politician family, which then again, he tried to file for office and he didn't make it. And from there, life took a turn to the worst. And at a very early age, I was exposed to what I would call poverty. When you say poverty, what do you mean? Ah, uh, like I had to, can you imagine, Jeff? I wanted to feature this out. I was a girl who was used to be driven to school. Picked up, drove to school. I had maids taking care of me. And all of a sudden, that life is gone. And now you're having, you've been changed school. To, from private school, now you're having to turn up to school for 10 miles. Mm -hmm. Culling, jerry can of water, books, and everything. What? I was ridiculed. I was, you know, at some point at a very young age, I was like, is this what life is all about? Can I take my life? You know, have you ever leashed up somewhere? You're like, no, I don't want to live anymore. I was that girl. But that was many years ago now. So don't feel sorry for me. God has been so good to me after that. What were you, I mean, when, you're, when the life changed like that, yeah? yeah? What happened to your parents? I mean, how did they They were still, they, well, they were coping, but in a very, my mom became very sick at some point. Uh, that time I had gone to high school and she was very sick and admitted here in Nairobi. And at some point, I had my, my dad telling his friend, oh my God, I can't pay the bill and I don't know how we're gonna do this. I called my auntie who happened to have been in UK and she came and helped us. But anyway, that is when I became the audacious dreamer because I started dreaming that I will be the person who will solve this problem. I'll be the person, I'll be the answered prayers to my family's life because I was the firstborn and um, Really, I I knew, I felt, have you ever felt that this is your responsibility even though nobody's speaking it? You just know it, they are waiting for you to have an answer? That was me. And I was a firstborn of five. And my dad had two wives, he still has. He's a kikuyu, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, the story. So, uh, how audacious did you become? At that young age, I started dreaming that one day I'm going to go abroad. I didn't know how, and I knew my parents couldn't afford it. But I started working hard in school knowing that. I don't want to go to college in Kenya. I just kept on telling myself, if my aunt came all the way from there and paid my mom bill, then it must be. That is where I'm going to go to get help. How long was that? That's a lie I told myself. But that's another story. But <laughs> at that young age, all I could think about is how am I going to get out of the country? So when I cleared high school now, after struggling and in fact, I was affected also academically because obviously you're having to deal with lack of school fees now and again, lack of this and that. But anyway, 
when now I cleared high school, I begged my dad, I literally begged him, please, 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 I need out of the country. Any money that you can lease that would have paid my school fees, I want to go out of the country. So I packed, got in the brain with only, I remember, I think I went to UK with only about 200 pounds. That is all I What were you going to the UK? I mean, what, what I wanted you? to go study now. I wanted to go do nothing. Okay. I told my parents, please, let me go study. So I landed there with only 200 pounds. Those are the days, by the way, Jeff, I'm not there. Yeah? So those are the days when we didn't need visas. <laughs> you only oh. needed to get a print ticket and you can go to UK. No. Yes. Nice girl. Nice girl. <laughs> so, so you got on the plane? So I got on the plane. Went to the UK. Went to the UK. And let me tell you, the life that I thought was going to be lousy turned out to be not money on the street. So, my first job was to clean hotel room. I'll never forget, it's called Metropole Hotel. It's a five-star hotel. In fact, I'm going to UK in May for a BBC interview. And I plan to sleep on Metropole Hotel. <laughs> Just where you used to clean. Where I used to clean. I plan to sleep in it. So, anyway, I was cleaning rooms there, believe it or not. A young girl of 18, I didn't know many people. I didn't know what to do, but I knew this. I had to feed my parents. I had to help my brother then who was going to Kenyatta University. We happened to be blessed with brain. So the school thing was, you know, was easier. So I was supporting them by just cleaning the rooms day and night, day and night. And as I was doing this, I was still dreaming that this is not it. I wasn't meant for this. I am meant for better. So I went to school. I started doing nursing. How long did you clean? I cleaned for like a year and to raise the money to be able to pay. You see, you have to pay, right? So I cleaned for a year to support me. I was living in a room uh, shared with other... I happened to meet other Kenyans there. You know, you get to meet Kenyans abroad. So we were sharing this four-bedroom house and so I was renting a room there. So as you meet with people, you start learning things, what to do, where to go. And that's when now I started doing nursing. I went back to school and life started looking up a little bit because I knew at least if I finish this, I'll get a job. But this is not where my story is now. Imagine this girl who's come from the village. Now she wants to do anything to be somebody. Then I fall in love with the young kid that I met there. So go figure. I don't have parents, no Kenyan. supervision. Kenyan. And got pregnant. So the nurse is now pregnant. And she's now supposed to be sending money home, home to her sick parents yes. and her siblings yes. to go to school. Yes. And you've fallen in love. I've fallen in love. And you're pregnant. And I'm pregnant. How and I've not you? finished school. How old are you then? This time I'm 20. Going to 21. <clears throat> And so I'm a baby myself, and I'm feeling I've let my parents down. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm doomed. I think I'm just doomed for failure. <laughs> you know, everywhere I turn, everywhere I go, failure just seems to follow me. But here's a good thing, though, out of the whole story. Uh, the boy I fell in love with, he was excited about the baby. So he, you know, so he was like, we got this, we'll do this. So you can imagine. Now, where I was renting the room, it happened to have been my auntie's place. We were kicked out. Why? Because now she was like, you're pregnant. You know, you shouldn't be pregnant. Of course, she, she kicked me out of love. You know, that one, you love somebody so much and you want to show them that what they're doing or the route they're taking is wrong. Now I understand it. Then I couldn't. I was too young to understand it. So now, to cut the long story short, I had to tell my parents, I could hear the disappointment in my mom voice but she was like okay so long as the man is going to stay with you then i'm happy for you uh so we moved my daughter was born again in a room in a place called watford she was born in watford uh, general in uk and Hertfordshire. so when she was born i went back to school and I worked hard. My husband now, who is still my husband, mm. worked very hard. This time now I was only, she was born when I was 21. My husband was 20, she was 24. Now I am 44 going and he's 46 going. And she's 20. So, and she's 21 going to 22. Going to university, this is her last year university. And I got another one there. So anyway, within a short duration after she was born, I worked hard. I went to school. I worked 16 hours a day. Between that and two years, Jeff, I had my own home. 
In the UK? In the UK. And what was your husband doing all this time? Working also. also. Going to school, yeah. working. Yeah. But what we did, we would go to school during the day, whatever hours, and immediately after, go to work. Our baby was raised by... This is where the story comes interesting. And that's explained to you why I'm going to UK for a BBC interview. I got to meet this uh, Pakistani family. They happen to have been my neighbors. And I don't know, have you, have God ever sent an angel to you? They, they came as angels because they realized how my husband and I were struggling with the baby. And because it was either him washing the baby or me washing the baby or us taking the baby to sit us at six in the morning, covering the baby with... So they offered to babysit the baby for us. So they said, you know what, since we are next door to you, at least you don't have to take the baby in the cold. Sometimes it's freezing in cold winter, yeah. in the winter. Mm. So they took in, my daughter is called Sandra, in when she was only a couple of months. She was, I think, six months old. And believe it today, even today, they are still very close. I actually call them parents that God gave me as ages. The Pakistanis. The Pakistanis. Uh, they took us in as their family. That's why I say um, love has no barriers. It don't matter what religion you come from. It don't matter which country you come from. There's a connection that God gives us. And God is love himself. And when you fight that, you've won. And that's what I, why I called my book Life of Faith. Because I had faith that one day my life would change. Then I called it hope because I always had hope. If nothing else I had, I had hope that somehow, somewhere, I don't know how God was going to do it. But he was going to change my life. And of course there's love. When I talk about love, I've seen love in different levels. That family, that's why I'm talking about, that was love that I didn't expect from a Muslim family. I'm also a Christian, and this is a Muslim family who took in my daughter, and you know how hard that is on a Muslim family to take in a black kid for that matter. There you go. And that is where the story gets interesting. They even became involved in my wedding. <laughs> they were part of my wedding. They helped me plan my wedding. I mean, they really became part of my life in each and every way. Hmm. And that is when I finished school. And that is how I was able now to start a new life. And, you know, I forgot there was poverty. I was able to now <laughs> raise money to educate me, educate my brothers, help my parents. On top of it, I was even able to build a home here. You know, like, so then now I knew nobody in my family would be living in the street or something. You know, and I was able to help my parents. And even now, as we speak, my mom is in UK getting some treatments. Uh, and from there I moved. I went to US because my husband got a job and we had to move. We came back home and then we moved to US. And then from US, we moved to Canada where now we live. Although I work here now, I open a clinic because I felt I needed to give back to the people of Kenya. What does your husband do? Uh, he's an accountant by trade. Yes, but we also do, we are now entrepreneurs, we do other businesses, like I have just opened Medical Spa, which was open, it will be three years this July in Kenya, uh, it's called Timeless Medical Spa in Lavington Mall, we deal with everything skin, he also do real estate, so we've also fished out of now just being employed to also being entrepreneurs. What a story, what kept you going? Paris, what kept you going? What kept me going mm. is having, you know, there's nothing bad like losing hope. Like I said, just knowing that I wasn't born for this. At one point, I had a good life. I can have that. I never wanted to taste trouble again. Poverty is something I swear, because you know what? <laughs> they say, person is sabuni aloha, mm. and I'm almost agreeing with that. <laughs> because it wiped tears. I don't care what people say. Okay, I know in my book I've said money does not buy happiness because it's true. I later on came to realize happiness comes within. It's I, not. I, I, I keep telling Jelango, money is not everything. No. He says that's right. It's not everything. No. It's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he keeps telling me. It's the only thing. No, wow. it, it, the only thing it doesn't buy happiness, but it it buy you good shoes, beautiful things. <laughs> Later on, you know, I came to realize, still, without love, without good relationship, you can have all the money, still, yeah. you'll be down. And this daughter of yours that she, that was raised by the Pakistanis, yes, uh, are you close? 
very close very very close she's finishing university this year i am going to canada in a month's time um we are, i'm so excited we are all going to uk for this uh, bbc interview because they are thinking of doing a documentary even maybe of my story and my family so i uh, we're very close can you imagine she was like my heart bag everywhere i went this girl went i was a baby myself also when she cried i cried <laughs> When I didn't know what to do with her, I just cried. So I, she's like, okay, I have another daughter now who is almost 30. But there's a very special board. I know you're not supposed to love one kid than the other. But the second kid came when life was good. When I had a home. When I had a car. When, you know, she doesn't know struggles. In fact, the other day she asked me, Mommy, you know, when I go to university, I want to go to New York. I said, why New York? Uh, she goes, because I was born in U.S., I would love to go to New York. And then I say, how about if mommy doesn't have money? She go, mom, from when I was born, I've never seen you without money. See, kids' me mentality, yeah? $10 to McDonald's is a lot of money, <laughs> as far as she's concerned. Mommy is full of fun. See, she doesn't know trouble, but with my big one, she understand. If you say there's no money, she understand. Because she's been there, she's seen it happening. You get what I mean? That's what I mean. That's the difference. So there's that special board. And there is that reminder that what life can be. Do you still have family in Nanyuki? I still do. My dad is there. Mm -hmm. My dad still lives there. I have uh, stepbrothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And I do go to Nanyuki at least once a year. I try to. Are you close? Yeah, we're very close. We're very close, neat family, funny enough. Uh, even though we are big family, mm. but my dad lays us to be very, you know, very close, neat family. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people would love to just leave Kenya. This, we actually were reading a survey today. Yeah. 54% of the people said they would prefer to live in America. Kenyans. Yeah. They were being asked the other day. Yeah. What advice would you give people who want to get up? I mean, you, <laughs> you went with 200 pounds and mm. no visa, and you struggled. I struggled. There is no, let me tell you, there is no green glass. It has to be watered by somebody. So for that young kid, especially I love to speak to young kids who think that the only place they can make it is abroad. You're wrong. Uh, abroad is just Kenya. It's just another Kenya. It's just another struggle in a different country. So there's no money swept in the front. No, you have to struggle. You have to work hard. So leaving Kenya to just go look for green pasture, it's not an answer. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. We've known people who've gone there and they come back in, you know, they're actually deported because maybe they didn't have a job. They didn't, you know. So I just happen to be one of that. You know, there are not many people. That's what people don't know. The number of success of people abroad is very minute. Yes, we come here and sometimes we pause as if life is so good mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But we're using credit card. When we go back there, we are working hard to pay back the credit yeah. card. So to me, any country is good for you so long as you know what you're doing. You have your goals clear. You, are, you know, you just focused like a laser, focus. It doesn't matter where you are, you will make it in life. Wow, absolutely. Kevin McKenzie, you wow. say true inspiration, positive energy. Uh, it's not the first time I've heard this lady. Thanks for another chance. I understand you speak to a lot of churches and youth groups. Yes. What do you tell them? Uh, when I, Kenya, I have not started. I'm about, I'm hoping to start speaking in Kenya, but in Canada, uh, that I give people hope because in Canada we have a lot of immigrants, yeah, people from other countries who come and, <laughs> <laughs> who come and start from lots. nothing, uh, and it's just telling them, look at me now, I'm an, a testimony. Like I like what Dilas just said, uh, God is good, and I, I can testify to that. So I can also testify to that that Lord can say change your story. So what your story is today take a clean i like to tell people take a clean canvas and the picture you have in your head start drawing it on that canvas because tomorrow that is the picture you're gonna leave so that's do not concentrate on what's going on now no. just draw that picture paint the one that picture. is in your head paint, paint it picture. paint your life there's someone called self-made yeah he's yeah. listening from jkia yes he says what a wonderful morning that story is so wonderful amazing and encouraging i'm loving the show well done paris oh thank you very much i appreciate that did you ever at one point want to give up 
Yes, so many times. In fact, I'm doing a vlog these days. If somebody wants to listen to some of my story, I'm on YouTube, Paris Boothia. Just go parisboothia.com and just Google me on YouTube. You'll find some of my story. I'm starting to encourage people. Yes, I have even sunk into depression. One day I was driving home uh, when I lived in the U.S. Um, in a place called Massachusetts. And I was driving home from work. I've done 16 hours shift in a hospital. And as I was driving, I just started sobbing. I cried hard and I couldn't tell why I was crying. I couldn't stop. So I just parked on the side of the road, cried for half an hour, then prayed for another half an hour to get the strength to drive the car home. And that is when I realized I had sunk into depression. I was taking in so much stress. My family needed me. I had a young baby. I am new everywhere. You know, you fight. When you're new everywhere, you fight like cats and dogs. You know, I'm, I'm amazed that I'm still married today. It takes God. <laughs> it takes God. But the first five years, you want to kill each other. You, you want to tear each other. And I was depressed. I sank into depression. And I thought that it was over. But that's why I'm telling people, please, if you are suffering, if you are you sunk into depression, please seek help because that's what I had to do. I had to seek counsel. Yeah. I went to see a counselor mm. and that is how I got help. And I was on denial. Being a medic, you know, I thought I can treat myself. A lot of us are in denial uh, yes. most of the time. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But when it comes to depression, it touches all of us. It doesn't poor leech in between, ugly, had some, doesn't matter. Leech niggas. Exactly. It touches okay. all of us. So don't be in denial. Seek help. Mm. Seek help. Is that your husband there in the picture? Yes. Bless him. Yes. Oh. Yes. Excellent. This You've been married like, how long? The, we've been married now for 24 years, 24 going to 25. Years. There's even a decent picture in that book of yeah. us. Is it there? It's a family. Yeah. Maasai Junior. Yeah. Says this woman has just made my day. What a wonderful story. I didn't know her, but Sasa. Menjua. It's the Hot Breakfast with Jeff and Jelano.